please, please use, use the flash. flash. Oh no, that's fine though. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's okay. Oh. <sighs> Deep breaths. Okay. Part two. Day Boo. two. Hello to everyone, family and mainly Uncle Robert. More family. <laughs> yeah. Um, Th 39 views, we are viral. Yeah, we're viral, it's great. Uh, so God. this will be our recap of day two, which again, we'll filter through all the different stuff that we did, although- You're gonna get me notes out, eh? They'll be a bit short. He took notes today. Yes. No, I didn't take notes today, I wrote notes. Woefully overprepared. All right. So, to start us off, what, how, how do we start the day? Uh, right, so, um, basically introduction on everything. Uh, I went on solo missions today because Cameron was otherwise busy with um, some hoity-toity deloity. Doing this. if that works. <laughs> uh, Cameron otherwise occupied. Uh, less sightseeing, more investigations. Uh, unfortunately, the most promising lead road blocked us. Mm. Um, they were more inclined to get home than help us, which is annoying. Um, the morning. Um, you can cut that, yeah. Um, went for a drive around the Crater Lakes. Now, actually pretty cool. <laughs> uh, the Blue Lake, the Blue Lake. Um, yep. is some of the cleanest water because it's filtered through limestone, we found out. Dropped in a few joints. Uh, Indigenous Health Corporation pointed me in some good directions. They were very helpful, actually. Gave me some numbers. Um, a number to Indigenous Connections in Adelaide, uh, but also the name of a locally funded Indigenous research group. Is that the That's one? the one. Yep, yeah, right up. Um, art Gallery gave me the name Auntie Michelle. Uh, she's apparently a Bwandic arts guru. Um, I've got her details. We'll post a picture. Now. Will we? Um, <laughs> Uh, Give me the, more work. the locally fund, the government funded research group is called Burundi's. Uh, they were not too keen on helping me no, on my weren't. own. We'll come back to that. Yeah, I know. Um, we'll come back to that. Uh, they weren't keen on helping me on my own. Um, yeah, just sort of said, oh, we don't really have any connections, but I, you know, send me an email. I might, I don't know, I would rather talk to you right now. Um, then I went in search of the burial of Andrew Williams, which I found uh, at Lake Terrace uh, burials, uh, right, ne right next to the crater lakes. Um, that is the father of Ethel and Percy. Uh, the burial of Andrew Williams. Thank you. So, it says, Beloved son of D. O. and C. Williams, the, ninth, uh, the 7th of September 1909, aged 24 years of age. Did I say that? In my hand, bring simply to thy crossing. I cling? Cross I cling, yep. What is that? Some significance? That's some significance. Probably Google it to find out, but in the afternoon, cut to that. Um, took Camden Cemetery to see the burial. Uh, yeah, we'll have that in between. Yeah. Yep. Um, then we went to the art center and saw the movie about the Dreamtime story of Mount Gambia. That was pretty cool. That was actually pretty cool. Yeah. I don't remember the guy's name, but it's basically a story about a family that created an oven. Several times. Several times, and those ovens were the volcanoes of this area. They kept blowing up. They kept blowing up because of a spirit? 
Yeah, the spirit was telling him that another spirit was after them. Yeah, so they had to keep moving, and then eventually they settled in Mount Gambia. Yes. After four different volcanoes. So that's the story of the creation You think after three, story. you'd get it, right? Yeah. Um, then, oh, we also, uh, that same movie had a lot about the geographical makeup of the area and how it would all work. Um, then we had, uh, so basically, things like, you know, the water here, because the ground's made of limestone, the water that falls here in Mount Gambia takes 35,000 years to make its way back to the ocean. Hmm. Fun facts, things you didn't know. Um, back to the Burundis with Cam. Got our hands on a Bawandic dictionary. Uh, so, see that? Yep. When we happened to rock up there today, they were doing a uh, learning session or how to develop learning material for this dictionary. Um, we dropped a couple names in there and all of a sudden they were keen to talk to us. He's perked up because of the relation between Jeanette Burr and, and Christina Smith. Christina Smith, who published the book that we have which was written way back when. Yeah, uh, but not very willing to help otherwise. Um, they sort of just wanted to get on the road home. Only one lady talked to us, there's about six others there and they didn't want to have a bar of us. It's a bit sad, really. Um, we stopped at the hospital to see if we could get some information from them regarding Jeanette, Jeanette Burr's illness and any other information really we could find. Um, they gave us a freedom of information request. Yeah, so that won't be processed very quickly. No, <laughs> so we can expect that in part four in three months time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, we also went to the police station and requested some information regarding Jeanette Burr, Ethel, Percy uh, and the Indigenous Protection Board. Uh, yeah. More than just the police reports, any information. Any information. Um, Which again, we can make that a part four. Cameron saw something interesting. Your photo. Oh uh, yes, there is a photo which you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so aggressive. God, um, you're loving this. You I am loving it. Um, uh, what was his name? Lanky, Lanky Smith. Smith. Now, Lanky Smith is the last known surviving Bwandic, Bwandic man, man. Um, and he was actually adopted by Christina Smith. Christina Smith, who wrote the book. Which and Jeanette Burr helped write. The book. Yeah, so Jeanette died in 1900 and Lanky Smith died four years later, 1904, and he's the last surviving Bwandic man, um, which was interesting. And he worked as a tracker for the police station, hence why yes. his photo was there. Yeah, so yeah, and he worked in the Rivoli and Mount Gambia districts. Mm. So, does that cover everything? Yeah, that's everything in my notes. Cool, all right. Um, Closing. A little bit disenfranchised, not gonna lie. Yeah. It's hard work today because people aren't as, you know, willing to help as you would think. Um, yeah. We press on. Yeah, that, and one thing that the lady who is the CEO of Borandi said is that to get this stuff verified, you had to live on the land. Yeah. Now, living on the land in Mount Gambia, probably not something we're keen on. But she did say that in recent times they've changed that to to incorporate, be more inclusive of people who have been removed from the lands, i.e. Uh, Our Eth family. Ethel and per Percy. Mm -hmm. um, so, fingers crossed if we can get something from her via email, we'll send all the documents through and go from there. Yeah, that sums it up. What's for tomorrow? We're not going to go to Mount Burr because... There's nothing there. No. <laughs> and... <laughs> The South Australian website of burials does not show Jeanette Burr was buried there. Yeah. So instead of an hour, wasting an hour and a half, we're gonna go to some other places we're gonna visit tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So again, this is part two. We'll um, we'll see you all in part three. We are a bit flat. Oh, so the weather's been shocking. Yeah, it hasn't been great. I feel like I'm in Melbourne still. Yeah.